All right, everybody, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Uh, turn your Bibles to Joshua chapter 5. But before we do that, I've heard that uh, some people were under spiritual attack. Uh, I could tell you some stories when I first came to the Lord. But uh, what I would suggest is uh, read to them, read to the devil spirits, Revelation 21, 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable, and that's what they are, they're abominable, and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Oh yeah, when Jesus confronted the devils, they always asked him, Art thou here to de uh, destroy us before the time? And you can find that in Matthew chapter 8, verse 29. And behold, they, the devils, and behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus? Thou Son of God, art thou come hither to torment us before the time? And they didn't say, what have we to do with the Yeshua HaMashiach? No, they said, what have we to do with the Jesus? You know, <laughs> maybe that's why they, the Yeshua crowd doesn't want us to know uh, using the name of Jesus, because devils are cast out by that name. So... All right, let's go to a little background on Joshua. All right, so if you've never read the entire Bible, you should. Get a King James and read it. And if you don't want to read it, well, uh, go to, um, you can go and get an Alexander Scorby King James Bible on CD and listen to it in the car or at home, um, you know. But a little background. Moses had led the children of Israel out of Egypt, and he uh, was told to strike, struck, strike the rock. I think it was for water, but uh, he struck it twice. And instead of giving God the glory, I think he said, we will give you water, or I'll give you water or something. And uh, God wasn't too pleased with that. So Moses was told, well, you're going to be able to see the promised land, but you're not going to go into it because you're going to die. So Moses died. So they um, had sent out two, 12 spies, one for each tribe of the Israel, and they spied out the land. And 10 of the 12 had said that... Um, Oh, man, we, we can't take this. There's a bunch of giants running around. No way, dude. We can't do that. We, we, we can't take this land. Uh-uh. We're afraid. Uh, well, that's the, that's the Bob paraphrase translation. But uh, Joshua and Caleb said, Oh, yeah, man, this place has got all ki kinds of you know good food, and we can do it. We can do this. You know, they were like uh, King David facing Goliath. You know, they knew that their destiny was to take this land and that God had given it to them. And they're like, come on, get off your lazy rear ends. Let's go do it. But Joshua and Caleb were the only ones that had confidence in the Lord. So here it is. When Moses died, I guess you could say the mantle passed on to Joshua. You know, the thing is, Lord wants us to have faith to be able to do the things that he wants us to do. Not, you know, doubt and cowardice. I mean, but you got to be sure that this is what the Lord, you know, wants. But they knew that they were going into the promised land. Well, who was in the promised land ahead of them as adversaries? The Canaanites. Now, the Canaanites, and if you don't believe me, I've got a playlist on YouTube. 
and uh, Brideon for however long that lasts. Uh, but uh, Or YouTube, too. How long is that going to last? I keep checking every day to see if my channel's gone. But uh, I've got an entire playlist that proves that the sons of God were the fallen angels in Genesis 6, and that after the flood, they did the same thing. They had the Canaanites, which were satanic hybrids, fallen angels, and humans. They have no offer of salvation. Zero. And uh, this is why the churches fight this. They don't want you to know that there are demonic beings walking around on this planet that have no offer of salvation. And then they'll say, well, you know, it's whosoever will. And, you know, all you got to do is decide that you want to be saved and say a 30-second sinner's prayer and you're saved. And that's what they want you to believe. They don't, you know, and they don't want you to know that God has a chosen people. Well, they do, but they want you to think it's the Antichrist over in the Middle East that are God's chosen people. I don't believe that, but a lot of people do, and they call me a heretic. So let's read Joshua chapter 5. All right, Joshua chapter 5, verse 1. We're going to read chapters 5 and 6. And it came to pass when all the kings of the Amorites, which were on the side of Jordan westward, and all the kings of the Canaanites, which were by the sea, heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan from before the children of Israel until we were passed over, that their heart melted. Neither was their spirit in them anymore because of the children of Israel. Now, <laughs> People, I, I don't know how many of you have been in the army, but, uh, you know, large rivers, deep rivers are a natural barrier to armies. And the Lord had dried up the water in the Red Sea and let the children of Israel pass. And he just did the same thing with, with Jordan, the River Jordan. And they're passing over into the promised land. All right. So here it is, there, these, the enemies of Israel, their hearts melted and they didn't have any confidence that they were going to be able to stop the children of Israel because they realized the God of Abraham, Isaac, and, A Isaac and Jacob was, Jacob Israel was <laughs> king of king and king of kings and lord of lords. All right, verse two, at that time, the Lord said unto Joshua, Make thee sharp knives and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. And Joshua made him sharp knives and circumcised the children of Israel at the hill of the foreskins. And this is the cause why Joshua did circumcise. All the people that came out of Egypt that were males, even all the men of war, died in the wilderness by the way after they came out of Egypt. Uh, you see people, my comment here, um, uh, now, God wasn't happy with the ones he took out of Egypt. They were complaining. Uh, they just, you know, God hates complaining. If he gives you something, don't complain. Paul, let's see, what did Paul say? In 1 Timothy 6 8, Paul says, And having food and raiment, or raiment's clothing people, and having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. And you don't hear that preached on uh, the uh, TBN channel, do you? No. So if you got food and clothes, be happy. That's what that's what Paul said. So, you know, people were complaining that came out of Egypt and God killed them all. All right, so. Now all the people that came out were circumcised, but all the people that were born in the wilderness, by the way, as they came forth out of Egypt, they had not been circumcised. For the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness till all the people that were men of war, which came out of Egypt, were consumed because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord, unto whom the Lord sware that he would not show them the land 
which the Lord swear unto their fathers that he would give us a land that floweth with milk and honey. Verse 7. And their children whom he raised up in their stead, them Joshua circumcised, for they were not circumcised because they had not circumcised them by the way. And it came to pass when they had done circumcising all the people that they abode in their places in the camp till they were whole. In other words, he waited until they were healed. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt from off you. Wherefore, the name of this place is called Gilgal unto this day. Unto this day. And the children of Israel encamped in Gilgal and kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month at even in the plains of Jericho. You notice they kept Passover, not Easter. They didn't have a, a Playboy bunny. I mean, I'm sorry, an Easter bunny. Is there a difference? Uh, an Easter bunny running around uh, hiding chocolate eggs. You know, what can I tell you? And for those of you that don't know it, Easter is uh, another name for Ishtar, who was the a goddess. Yeah, a goddess. A female satanic god. That's what Easter is. You know, it's... You know, how, how did how did we go from Passover to Easter? That's, you know, a good question. All right, so verse 11. And they did eat of the old corn of the land on the morrow after the Passover, unleavened cakes and parched corn in the self same day. And the manna ceased on the morrow after they had eaten of the old corn of the land. Neither had the children of Israel manna any more. But they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. See, God rained down manna for them, and some of the people complained. Manna for breakfast, manna for lunch, manna for dinner. We're tired of this stuff. We want something different. Well, you know, I guess it's better to starve to death, right? And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay, but as captain of the, of the host of the Lord. If you don't know what the host of the Lord is, uh, you're talking about the host of the army of the angels. He says, but as captain of the host of the Lord, am I now come? And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? Now, um, this is, some people, and I do also, believe that this was what was called the angel of the Lord. And if you read about the angel of the Lord, some people think it was Christ in his pre-human uh, form. So here it is, he says, I'm captain of the host of the Lord. Now, if this was a mere angel, you know, it says, Joshua fell on his face and did worship and said unto him, what saith my Lord unto his servant? Now, if it's not, if this is not God, uh, if this was just a mere angel, he would have said, oh, wait a minute, don't worship me, worship God, get up. But he didn't do that. All right, well, prove the point. Revelation chapter 19, verse 9. And he said unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Revelation 22. Uh, let's see. Verse 
Revelation 22, 7. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings and the prophecy of this book. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not. For I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren, the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. Worship God. So, but here in Joshua 5, in verse 14, And he said, Nay, but as captain of the Lord of the host, and I come, I am, am I now come? And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship, and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto a servant? And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, He didn't tell him to get up and said, Worship God. He didn't say, I'm thy fellow servant. No. He said, Loose thy foot from off, loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place whereon thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. So, that's why some people think that this is uh, Christ before he took on human flesh. And sometimes the angel of the Lord talked in the first person, uh, saying the things of God. All right, so let's go to chapter 6. Now, just a, another thing. Uh, they had spied out Jericho, and then the people of Jericho found out that they uh, Israel had the spies, or spy. I don't remember if it was one or two. But um, Rahab was a, a harlot, a whore, maybe a prostitute, I don't know. But she, uh, she feared God and knew that um, the spies were, you know, they, she knew what was coming. So she lived on by the wall and she let the uh, she let either Joshua or Caleb escape when they were looking for him and they made a promise to her that uh, her, everybody in the house her house would live now people will say oh well see this proves that the Canaanites have offer of salvation but it doesn't say you know she if if I live in America I'm an American right and if you live in Germany, you're a German, right? But what happens if you're a, a Muslim from um, Egypt and you move to Germany? Does that make you a German? I think not. But the thing is, I personally think that uh, Rahab was of the tri uh, of Shem, the chosen one or at least of Japheth, of the sons of Noah. I do not believe she was racially a Canaanite. She might have lived among them, but, you know, can I prove it? No. But the thing is, uh, if you look at Christ's genealogy, his of line of the flesh came from Rahab. I forget if it was Mary's side or if it was Joseph's side. Uh... I don't remember, you know, but I don't spend a, a lot of time on genealogy. I just don't think it's all that important. And besides, uh, Paul says, don't, basically paraphrasing, he says, don't waste a lot of time on endless genealogies. Does it matter? Not to me, you know. Just know that there's a chosen seed and there's the unholy seed all right joshua 6 verse 1 now jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of israel none went out none came in uh for those of you that don't know it during a siege an army will surround a city and you know depending upon how much food and things the city has inside of it you know that's some cities can be under siege for long periods of time. All right, verse 2. Now, this uh, Jericho has a, a large wall. And we're going to find out what happens to this. 
And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. Ye shall compass the city. Compass means to go round. You know, that's what a compass is, right? When you look at a compass, northeast, southwest. Ye sh and ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. Isn't it funny? In the book of Revelation, there's uh, seven trumps during the tribulation. Oh, yeah. Seven trumpets of ram's horns, and the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times, and the priest shall blow with the trumpets. Now, isn't that interesting? They were told to do this six days, and on the seventh day, they're going to blow the trumpet, and boom, something major is going to happen. Well, guess what? They're going to break the Sabbath. Think about that. God's telling them to break the Sabbath because they're going to do work for seven days, right? Uh, I'm just pointing that out. Don't make a doctrine out of it, please. Verse 5, And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the shout, I'm sorry, when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, People, I'm telling you, this reminds me of the end of the tribulation when God blows when the, at the last trump, Christ comes back in glory and takes the land. I mean, that's what I get. When I read this, this is what I'm thinking. Now it shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and, and when ye Hear the sound of the trumpet. All the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat. And the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. Now, people, you got to realize something. When you're uh, when you build a wall to defend a fort or a city, the walls are not real thin; they're thick, and there you've got all the soldiers on top on the top of the wall and they're going to be shooting arrows down and and you know that's what they're going to do they're going to throw stones down i mean they're on top of the wall the soldiers a lot of the soldiers probably most of them so what happens when these tall walls fall flat all the soldiers on top of it probably if they're not killed outright they're going to be severely injured and you know and then the children of Israel are going to have, you know, uh, what are they going to fight? I mean, all the soldiers are going to be either dead or injured, right? Verse 6, And Joshua the son of Nun called the priests and said unto them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Ark of the Lord. And he said unto the people, Pass on and compass the city, and let him that is armed pass on before the Ark of the Lord. And it came to pass when Joshua had spoken unto the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns passed on before the Lord and blew with the trumpets and the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord followed them. See, sometimes Satan will try to put up walls to protect his own. And what does God say? Uh, well, let's take a look. Well, in uh, 2 Corinthians 10.5, Paul writes, Casting down imaginations. So, you know, I used to be a daydreamer when I was in uh, elementary school. But we're supposed to cast down imaginations in every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. All right, in 2 Corinthians 10.4, we read, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And that's what these walls were in Jericho. God wants us to pull down 
Satan's strongholds. So let's go back to Joshua 6. Oh, uh, let's see. Verse 7, we'll read that again. And he said unto the people, Pass on and compass the city, and let him that is armed pass on before the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass, when Joshua had spoken unto the people, that the seven priests, bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns, passed on before the Lord, and blew with the trumpets, and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. Do you know there's a feast of the Lord, a festival, a holy day called uh, the Feast of Trumpets? You can look it up. You know... God, when God returns, he's going to be, there's going to be shouting and blowing of trumpets. There ain't going to be no secret rapture thingy that uh, everybody's looking for. No. All right, verse 9. And the armed men went before the priest that blew with the trumpets, and the reward, re, reward, came after the ark, the priest going on and blowing with the trumpets. And Joshua had commanded the people, saying, Ye shall not shout nor make any noise with your voice, neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I bid you shout, then shall ye shout. So the ark of the Lord compassed the city, going about it once, and they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. And Joshua rose Early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord, and the seven priests, bearing seven trumpets, ram's horn, before the ark of the Lord, went on continually, and blew with the trumpets, and the armed men went before them, but the re-reward came after, uh, after the ark of the Lord, the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. And the second day they compassed the city once and returned unto the camp. So did they six days." And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and compassed the city after the same manner seven times. Seven times. Only on that day they compassed the city seven times. All right, so verse 16. And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priest blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city. And the city shall be accursed, or accursed, even it, and all that are therein to the Lord. Only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers that we sent. Oh, okay, so it was to, it was probably Joshua and Caleb. And Joshua and Caleb made a, a, a promise to her, and they're going to keep it. Verse 18, And ye in any wise keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves accursed. When ye take the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. But all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. So the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpets, and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout, that the wall fell down flat. And I guess all the soldiers that were on top of the wall, they fell down flat also. And they were all probably killed. How You know, that's an easy way to take a city when all the army's dead, right? Continued, so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city, and they utterly destroyed all that was in the city both man and woman, young and old, and ox and sheep and ass with the edge of the sword. And the wicked, evil, so-called atheists, they're not, will, uh, will charge God with being evil because they utterly destroyed both man and woman, young and old, in the city. Well, these were satanic hybrids. They were part fallen angel and part human. That's why God said, destroy them, utterly wipe them out. But Joshua said unto the two men that had spied out the country, oh, okay, I guess it wasn't uh, Joshua, 
Go into the harlot's house and bring out thence the woman and all that she hath, as ye swear unto her. And the young men that were spies went in and brought out Rahab and her father and her mother and her brethren and all that she had, and they brought out all her kindred and left them without the camp of Israel. And they burnt the city with fire, and all that was therein, only the silver and the gold and the vessels of brass and iron, they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. And Joshua saved Rahab the harlot alive in her father's household and all that she had, and she dwelt in Israel even unto this day, because she hid the messengers which Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. So here it is. Sometimes God puts, uh, wants us to tear down Satan's strongholds. His Satan puts up walls too. Sometimes God puts up walls to protect us, but sometimes Satan puts up walls to try to protect what he has in his strongholds. And God wants us to tear them down. But if you're not obedient, obedience goes a long way. And you'll hear the heretics say, well, you know, if you're obedient, you're doing lordship salvation. And what they'll say is, oh, well, you're trying to be obedient to uh, earn your salvation. And, you know, King Saul, when he was small in his own eyes, the Lord blessed him greatly. But when he got a big fat head and he started doing the things that he was disobedient to the Lord, doing the things the Lord told him not to do, God cast him away and put David, the king, in his place. So, you know, obedience. You, without obedience, you can't do much. Verse 26, And Joshua adjured them at this time, saying, Cursed be the man before the Lord that rises up and buildeth this city Jericho. He shall lay the foundation thereof in his firstborn, and his youngest son shall he set up the gates of it. You know, people have tried to rebuild Jericho, and their children died. Seriously, God put a curse on this city. It was bad. So the Lord was with Joshua, and his fame was noised throughout all the country. Um, a really interesting book was uh, The Bible as History. Uh, I, oh, boy, what was the name of that author? Let me look it up. Oh, okay. The Bible as History is the name of the book, and the author is Werner, W-E-R-N-E-R, -E -E Keller, K-E-L-L-E-R. Fantastic book, and it covers uh, this. All right, so let's take a look at some, uh, why did the Lord have them break the Sabbath? You know, they marched seven days. I wasn't planning on this, but uh, it came up. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14, now think about Jericho. You know, they compassed, they went around the city seven times. They blew the trumpet and they shouted. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Didn't they shout at Jericho? Yeah with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, the trumpet of God. So there's going to be the trumpet and the shouting, just like a Jericho. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. All right, let's take a look at Revelation chapter 8. We're getting ready to close this out. Uh, verse 1, And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Just like Jericho, right? Well, And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayer, with the prayer of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. 
I mean, wow. Our prayers, prayers of the saints, huh, with the smoke of the incense ascend up before God out of the angel's hand. Isn't that something? And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with the fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. And uh, you could keep reading this uh, if you want. But uh, yeah, let's read a couple of them. And the first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood. And they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of the trees were burnt, and all the green grass was burnt up. You know, uh, in the when Moses was getting ready to get the children of Israel out of Egypt, they had hail that was uh, fire. So, you know, these plagues are very similar to what happened in Egypt. And the second angel sounded, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. You know, I did a study on this, and uh, from what I understand, the Pacific Ocean alone is one-third of all the water on the earth. Just the Pacific Ocean. I mean, it's huge. So maybe this burning mountain hits the Pacific Ocean and kills everything in it. I don't know. Uh, let's see. All right, so, you know, you, you get the idea. It's some bad, bad stuff. All right, 1 Corinthians 1550. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. Well, in Jericho and in Revelation, the seventh trump is the last trump. And it's at the end of the uh, tribulation. So where do they come up with this pre-trib rapture stuff? Only in the minds of Bible scholars that aren't scholars. Pseudo-scholars, I guess you could say. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I've had people say, well, you know, that's th there's another last trump. What? There's another last trump? Uh... I don't think so. Last means last. First means first. Jesus says he's the first and he's the last. Doesn't mean there's another comes before him or somebody comes after him. Sorry. Uh, I guess they never finished. Uh, uh, they're probably products of government education, you know, public schools. And uh, who knows, maybe they never got out of elementary school and went straight to Bible college. I don't know. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Now, to me, people, if you know the Old Testament, the New Testament will give you more light towards the Old Testament. I mean, you know, God does things in cycles. And just like when the children of Israel were in Egypt, the children of the Canaanites were in the Promised Land, knowing full well that God was going to give it to Israel, but they were to be their God's, uh, God's and God's people's adversary. So, has anything changed? Who's in the land now? Well, let's take a look at the parable of the wheat and the tares. Uh, a parable is a story 
uh, with an, uh, an earthly spin that has a heavenly application, a meaning. Matthew 13, 24. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. And that's the children of Adam, people. That's the children of Israel. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares, or weeds, and sowed tares among the wheat, and went his way. Didn't Jesus say he was the bread of life? What do you make bread out of? Wheat, right? His enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. Now, I did an, a detailed study on uh, the wheat and the tares. I think it's in my playlist. And I'm telling you, people, the tares over in the Middle East, when, when they grow among the wheat, even an experienced farmer can't tell the difference. It's only when the wheat matures that you can tell the difference between the wheat and the tares. It's called the bearded darnel. Yeah, I, I've done too much reading and research. And I, yeah. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good, feet, uh, good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? In other words, uh, didn't you plant wheat in this field? Where did all these weeds come from? I mean, they're everywhere. That's the Bob translation. He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. All right, so how is this going to work? Well, let's take a look. Now, how is this going to work? How, how are they going to be able to gather up the tares without gathering up the wheat? Simple. Matthew 10, 23. But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. You see, Luke 21, 12. But before all these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues, and who hangs out in the synagogues, and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. Yeah. That's what's going to happen. The persecution's going to come. It's going to be so bad that people are going to have to flee the cities. You know, people, I did a playlist on uh, the wilderness. I've got an entire playlist on YouTube on the wilderness for as long as it lasts. Uh, Revelation 12 and verse 6. And the woman, that's the church, that's Israel, and the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. That's about three and a half years, people. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against a dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuseth them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives 
unto the death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast under the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And the woman was given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, not the cities, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place when she, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. A time is a year, and times is two years and half a time. So that's three and a half years. The woman's going to fly into the wilderness where she's nourished for a three and a half years from the face of the serpent. Verse 15, And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Earthquake people. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God, obedience, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Not have the testimony of Yeshua HaMashiach. No. All right. Let's go back to the parable of wheat and tares. Matthew 13. In verse 30, it said, Let both grow together until the harvest, and in the time of the harvest I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. All right. Matthew 13, verse 36. Then Jesus sent the multitude away, and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. In other words, explain this to us. Give us more detail. We're, we're not getting it, Lord. Bob translation. He, verse 37, he answered and said unto them, He that sowed the good seed is the Son of Man. That's Christ. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as a sun in the kingdom of their father, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. And let me tell you, people, let me explain something to you. Just like the, the tares were in the promised land in the days of Joshua, and Joshua and, and the armies of the Lord confronted them, so shall it be in the end times. Matter of fact, today, people, the tares are going to be there confronting Christ when he returns with their armies. You know, Christ isn't just going to come down and everybody's going to be, yay, hooray. No, they're going to be there with their armies to fight him. I'm going to close this out with Malachi chapter 1. Verse 1, the burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob. See, the Lord loved Jacob. Verse 3, and I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Esau 
is going to have his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. And who's the dragon? Well, Satan and the devil. Verse 4. Whereas Edom saith, uh, Esau and Edom is just two words for the same group of people. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Think about the Middle East. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down, just like they did at Jericho. They will build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. Do you know what indignation is? Extreme hatred. They shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. And modern preachers will say, Ah, oh, well, you know, that's just until Jesus arrives, and now he just loves everybody. I guess they don't understand what the word forever means. And your eyes shall see, and ye shall say, The Lord will be magnified from the border of Israel. A son honoreth his father, and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is mine honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear, saith the Lord of hosts unto you, O priests that despise my name? And ye say, Wherein have we despised thy name? Ye offer polluted bread upon mine altar, and ye say, Wherein have we polluted thee? In that ye say, The table of the Lord is contemptible. And if ye offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if ye offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto thy governor. Will he be pleased with thee, or accept thy person, saith the Lord of hosts? And now I pray thee, beseech God that he may be gracious unto us. This hath been by your means. Will he regard your persons, saith the Lord of hosts? Who is there even among you that would shut the doors for naught? Neither do ye kindle fire on mine altar for naught. I have no pleasure in you, saith the Lord of hosts. Neither will I accept an offering at your hand. For from the rising of the sun, even unto the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. And in every place incense shall be offered unto my name, and a pure offering for my name shall be great among the heathen, saith the Lord of hosts. And with that, I think I'm going to close out this Bible study. I hope you learned something. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen. People, the wilderness is going to be the future of the church, the underground church. So keep that in mind. All blessings, praise, and honor to Jesus. Amen.